Hello and welcome to the next video of my series. In this video we are going to talk about each talent in detail. So every talent in the arms, fury and defensive um, tree, where it's more in the arms and defensive, it's only one in the protection tree that is relevant for PvE. So we don't talk about PvP talents or PV talents that are mainly you or only used for PvP. We only gonna talk about the PvE talents, so that's good because this video will already take take a while. And uh, yeah, how I'm gonna handle this is like, for example, if I talk about this talent, this talent is about fairy chance, and so I will not only say you this talent is good or this talent is bad. I will as well tell you what the parry means and so on or if I talk about heroic strike improved heroic strike I will not tell you this is good or this is bad value I will talk you what exactly is heroic strike so you can um, build your warrior build uh, your yeah your warrior yourself so uh, like a pro basically and yeah this will take a while but this video will contain a shit ton of knowledge about the class and if you really want to go to the limit and if you are not experienced or if you are experienced and you want to learn more i recommend you watching the whole video because there will be a lot of valuable information even though it will maybe uh, niggle a bit on your on your ability to focus <laughs> so let's start with the first talent which would be improved heroic strike so this talent is um, not very strong because it only reduces the rage cost of your heroic strike by three and your heroic strike costs 15 rage so that's not a big improvement however it's better in the other choices here um, for single target dps so what is heroic strike heroic strike is um, an ability you press and it will do your next your next auto attack will be an heroic strike instead of an auto attack so it will deal a yellow number instead of a white number and from now on i will refer to abilities as yellows and to auto attacks as whites white hits or auto attacks so it it, it transforms your white hit to uh, yellow and thus this means that it will not generate any rage so it will cost even more than the 12 rage spec or the 15 rage on spec uh, unimproved because it's cost the rage that your auto attack will not would normally do so however the difference between an auto attack and the yellow is the auto attack can glance you have a 25 percent chance to glance on an on a hit on a mob that is uh, three level above you or with other red words bosses and the glancing blow will not only deal less damage but is also not able to crit so with pressing heroic strike you can enhance your next auto attack by a lot you will give it basically a bonus percent crit chance and you will give it more um, more dp uh, more damage so this ability is uh, a lot of rage for for not um, for very low de damage but if you are like about 90 rage or from 80 80 plus rage you will actually press this ability in single target so this is good so this is a good talent for raiding and for low level because on low level you only have heroic strike and nothing else and on low level free rage less is actually um, quite noticeable okay the next talent would be parry so what is a parry like i said before um, a parry everyone knows if you parry you will take zero percent of the damage that has been uh, that would have been inflicted to you otherwise on a melee attack but uh, that's not everything that uh, parry does um, because in world of warcraft we have something that is called parry haste and i will show you right now this is a swing timer this shows you when the next order attack will come through and if the swing timer is anywhere here and you will uh, land a parry this uh, parry will cut out some of the time 
your auto attack needs to come out again. So um, yeah, parry will not only increase your survivability, but if you are being attacked, it will also increase your DPS or your rage gain. Especially, this comes especially strong if mo multiple mobs attacking you. So if you're doing normal dungeons or if you are tanking, and this can be a significant increase to your DPS. Keep in mind that abilities like Cleave or Heroic Strike occur on your next auto attack. So this ability can increase the number of, of cleaves you can dish out in a short amount of time by a lot. Compare this with Sweeping Strikes and you can get a high DPS increase when having multiple mobs attacking you and being specced into parry. Next talent is Rend. Rend is, um, as a warrior, you always want to consider how much da damage you get for the rage you spent. And if you look at that on, on Rend, you will not get a lot of damage for Rend. So 10 rage, and then you get like, what? You get uh, 35 plus 182. This is not a lot so you don't really press rent in the later stages of the game. However, there are overpower fishing specs in uh, where you stay in battle stance. This is um, especially important if you want uh, tier 5 2 set bonus because this will give you uh, every time you overpower for 5 seconds you get 100 attack power and if you're running this spec and if you're running 2 piece and you are you and you, you are assigned to Thunderclap, which is all also only available in battle stance. You might want to consider improving your rent because you're gonna press it from time to time in this uh, in this build. Uh, yeah, in the early levels, rent is really good uh, damage per rage, so you could consider specking into this on your on your journey when you are level like 15 or something. Okay. Next we have um, improved charge, which gives your charge, if you have spec two points into it, a six additional rage generation. And yeah, this is, um, what can I say about this? I have to start from the very bottom, I guess. So the warrior class uh, is made to, is built to build uh, the resource up first and then dump the resource. So you always start at zero rage and then you uh, build up the rage and then you use the rage. But rage will snowball in more rage because you have some, as you have stuff like sword specialization, which can proc out of your abilities. So if you press more abilities, sword spec will proc more frequently and feed you more rage. So you can spend even more abilities. The same goes for Wind Fury is the same, so the more buttons you press, the more procs you get, and so you more rage, the more rage you get, and you get more button presses again. Crit counts into this as well, because every time you crit, you get an attack speed buff. So the more buttons you press, the more crits you get, the more attack speed buff uptime you get. So this all snowballs very, very hard. And if you start, the fight with more rage, you can immediately go, um, go with your rotation, and uh, yeah, a warrior that that starts with 100 rage in a fight, that's it's almost unstoppable for the first uh, couple of seconds of the fight. So, next we have this unbreakable will, which gives you a chance to resist uh, CC effects. If you are getting CC'd for five seconds in a boss fight, and you resist it, that's a five second more uptime for you. So this is obviously very good if you're only concerned about uh, your parses or your DPS. Then we have, uh, in, of course, this can save your life as well in a dungeon or, or in the PvP. So then we have improved Thunderclap. I already talked about Thunderclap enough in other videos, like how important it is. This ability improves Thunderclap by a lot like it reduces the rage cost by four, which is uh, a lot. And it uh, increases the damage by 100% and it increases the, or it doubles the slow effect on it. So this talent is extremely strong in the early levels and the late levels. Okay. 
let's go to the next uh, row. We have um, anger management here. This will produce one rage every three seconds, or with other words, it will increase the time that your rage will take to one out by one third. And as a warrior, if you are not in fight, your rage is going to run out. And as a warrior, you want to always bank on rage after a pull. You mo in most time, you will not use execute at the end, so you do not dump all your rage. So keeping your rage is actually important between pulls while leveling or while doing dungeons. This talent for one talent points helps with that a lot. Like I said earlier, if you start with a lot of rage into the fight, you can immediately get going with your rotation and immediately start to snowball. So then we have the, I like to call holy Trinity because all this uh, is scaling with each other a little bit at least. We have first, we have improved overpower. So improved overpower increases the crit chance of overpower. And overpower we have here, we look again, damage value for rage spent. We have a uh, one weapon swing plus 35 damage. So one weapon swing is the same that is um, like your slam is doing one weapon swing, your mortal strike, which cost 30 rage is doing one weapon swing and your whirlwind is doing one weapon swing. So five rage for one weapon swing plus the plus the bonus crit chance is like the best ability you can press when it comes to the rage uh, spent to the damage uh, inflicted uh, rage spent in in um, regards to damage inflicted so there's that so improving this is very good why I have only one point right now? It's because on your rating spec you don't really use overpower at the moment because you're sitting in berserk stance all the time. You have not spec tactical mastery, which will increase the rage you take when you swap stance by uh, by 15. So it's really hard to find opportunities to use overpower in the in the uh, content right now. So this is why I only spec one. So here you get the you get the free crit every time your opponent dodges. On this talent will uh, apply a bleeding effect on your enemy every time you crit. So these two have already some synergy and you need to spec this anyways to get down here, which is Impale, which is uh, one of the strongest talents in the game because you get for two points you get 20% extra crit damage and if you crit 50% of the time that's 20 uh, that's 10% increased damage right there and of course here you get your free crit here you get your debuff when you crit and here you make the crit even stronger so and if you are further down right here you also get an attack speed increase every time you crit so this is a safe way to get you an attack speed buff get your get your debuff on and stuff like this if you reach this point while leveling, you should focus on specking these out as soon as possible. So then we have two-handed specialization. Two-handed specialization increases the weapon damage that is displayed on your character sheet right here by 1% per point, which means it will increase the damage of your outer attacks. It will increase the damage of everything that is a, a melee swing plus X. So overpower slam, mortal strike or wheel run or heroic strike or cleave of course but it will not increase the bonus damage that mortal strike is dealing the bonus damage that is deal, uh, dealt by overpower it will not increase the damage of execute because execute is not scaling with your weapon damage and it will not increase the damage of victory rush so keep that in mind but it's still a good talent if you're using it to end so next row <coughs> We have the uh, Death Wish talent, which is such as the DPS cooldown. You should uh, just spec it. It's 20% more damage for 30 seconds for half a minute. It's extremely strong. You want to um, <coughs> you want to be cautious when you use it because um, yeah, it's very strong and you don't want to fail this one. Um, it costs 10 rage and and the global, but this is not a problem. In addition to that, it increases the damage you take by 5% but this is not uh, really that bad because every time uh, as a warrior, every time you hear damage taken, you think about getting rage because if you take damage, you get more rage. So this is 5% more rage from uh, damage 
it flicked it to you, which is nice as well. So then we have the free specializations for the weapons. X gives you crit. And yeah, crit, let's talk about crit in this. Uh, let's take this opportunity to talk about crit for the warrior. So if you crit, you obviously get an attack speed buff and you are uh, crits deal 20% more damage. You also are going to apply the wounds, which will enable blood frenzy. And uh, if your white hits crit, you get double the rage because it's double the damage. And the double the rage means more attacks, means more crits and so on. So X specialization is not bad and uh, should be used if your weapon, if your best weapon available to you is the axe. If you have, yeah, so, or if you have two weapons that are equally as good, like a sword and the, like a sword and the axe, you have to look how much crit you have if you are buffed in uh, your group, and if you are below 34% crit with your buffs, you should use the axe. However, if you are above that or on that number, you use the sword. You can see I have only 30% crit here. But uh, I will uh, get buffs in raid that will boost my crit by enough. But mostly, really, this uh, depends on the weapon you got available to you. The slower the weapon, the harder it hits, the better. The more crit is on the weapon, the better. That's the things you watch out for. So then we have uh, mace specialization, which uh, you do not want to use in PvE. There are uh, some interesting um, builds you can do with maces, like um, stunning a lot of targets in AoE cleave dungeons, but it's kind of troll, but yeah, if you want to do that, you can go for it. However, if you're uh, having a good mace and you want to deal damage in a raid, I wouldn't suggest going for, this special, uh, for the mace specialization. I would suggest uh, what called two-handed fury spec. I will link uh, some specs at the end, at the end, and the 200 Fury May spec will be among them, and you should use this instead of the May spec, because the May spec is very troll for single target PvE DPS. Right, next row we have um, these two, which are for PvP, and we have this one, which will increase the duration of your big cities. Your big cities as a warrior are Reckletness. Retaliation and shield wall. So, yeah, what they do, you can, um, I think you know, and they are really strong. They have a lot of cooldown, and if you increase the duration of them, it's it's gonna be very clutch. So, if you want to um, parse on a boss fight that's, that is not very long, this will increase your DPS. If you want to save a pool by using shield wall mass taunt or AoE taunt, this will increase the chances of you actually saving that pull by a lot. So this is the reason why I got 3 here and 4 here. The normal raid spec would have 5 here and 2 here. But I don't really care about the 1% extra damage. I care more about the clutch situations in which this uh, would come in. And yeah, then you have your time to shine. If every time you burst you have more fun. If you are saving uh, like a boss fight you have more you have more, uh, you can do it longer, basically. So, but uh, yeah, we will, you don't really talk about sword spec, I guess. Sword spec gives you the chance of an extra attack. This extra attack will generate rage and will not, uh, will not reset your swing timer. So this will scale extremely well with good gear and extremely well with wind fury. So even if you have 30% crit and an axe or a sword, if you have wind fury, you would still use the, f the sword, but you will not always have Wind Fury, so I still recommend the X if you are under this uh, threshold of, of crit. And we have Mortal Strike, we simply need to, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a 30 rage instant ability, it's very expensive in the early levels, like when you spec it on level 40, you can, you can use it, but you can really only use this because it's 6 second cooldown and you use it and you have 6 seconds to build up 30 rage again and on lower levels you might not be able to do this on higher levels anyways uh, you have enough have, an, uh, have enough rage to use this on cooldown so in that case 
flexibility becomes very very good and uh, better riff gear becomes better riff gear this is the blood frenzy debuff we talked about uh, everyone wants you for that so we don't need to judge about this here we have one, uh, five percent crit <coughs> Again, this should be a no-brainer by now for you, because you know how important grit is. This talent will um, Im improve your shots. Uh, like it will increase the duration and the range, which can be extremely come in handy. Uh, will improve your quality of life a lot. So I would recommend this talent. If you are, sh uh, for example, if you are cresting and your bro is killing a mob over there, and you shout, you cast battle shout, and you don't have this spec. You will battle shout will only have 20 yards, so he will not be reached over there. So you would cast it, would need to cast it again later, or your mate would just simply lose out on battle shout. This can be really annoying. This can also occur in dungeons when someone is eating way in the back. Um, yeah, and the extra minute is uh, very very convenient as well because two minute battle shout or three minute battle shout is um, often the difference between casting it in a boss fight or casting it or don't casting it because a lot of boss fights go between two and three minutes so if it, the boss fight goes between two and three minutes this uh, talent will make you able to only cast it at the beginning and not in the fight which can be a good dps increase so this one will just improve the um, attack power reduction of your demo shout by 40%, which is pretty huge, but it's not really needed all that much. This is if you want to uh, really stretch the ability to decrease the damage that your tank is taking or you are taking from melee attacks, so obviously. So this one has a chance every time you are attack with a melee weapon, you have a chance to generate one rage. This um, in lower levels, you are especially with a two-hander attacking, are not doing many attacks. So this one is very bad in lower levels. On higher levels, with with sword spec and a proper rotation, you actually do get in a lot of hits. So this can be, this can be a DPS increase in higher level, depending a little bit on the length of the boss fight, on your gear and uh, your able uh, and your ability to play your rotation if you overcap rage and stuff like this. So my recommendation would be cruelty and this one. So next one we have uh, improved cleave, which will increase the uh, bon bonus damage of your cleave. So not the overall damage, but the bonus damage. For example, right now my cleave is, do uh, is doing 70 extra damage. Cleave is when your next auto attack will hit two targets and um, yeah, so it will deal not a lot of bonus damage if I skill this. You can have to keep in mind that you are not casting a lot of cleaves as a two-hander because your two-hander is slow and your main damage that your cleave is doing is coming from your auto attack part and not from the bonus damage so for example with a fast dagger this talent is good with a slow as weapon this, uh, this talent is shit so then we have piercing hound this is an aoe slow 50 percent slow that you can just spam and it's only cost 10 rage so it's really useful if you are coming from uh, retail you might think this is not really that good but on tvc classic an aoe slow that can be casted like uh, it's not on an like earthbind totem that is slowing around it with an aura this you can only uh, you can just cast wherever you stand is really really helpful like i said in the first video you can uh, enable caster cleave without the mage, caster cleave dungeon without the mage. So you pull a lot of mobs and you're going to uh, um, keep them slowed so the so the mage, um, so the warlock and the elder shaman or whatever can can kill them and the battle tank can kite them. This also enables you to two hand tank packs. You how you would do this is you charge in. You burst really really hard so that you pull aggro on all of the mobs you use piercing howl and then you just run away wait for your swing timer and run in for if your swing timer is finished you run in for a cleave and a whirlwind you cast this again and you run away again this is um, this way you can tank mob groups in uh, dungeons 
with taking minimal damage and doing a lot of damage like you almost you almost not missing out on damage because your two hander is slow and if you run in every time you swing you're not losing really a lot of damage so this one gives you a little bit of heal every time you got crit it's obviously not uh, very useful for dps but it can uh, improve your survivability while cresting so uh, this is um, improving your shouts like i said your battle shout is the is the most insane tool to increase the dps of your of the melee in your group so improving this by 25 percent is always a good idea it will increase your dps as well so next row we have this one with, which is only viable for dual wield and we have improved execute this one is uh, kind of interesting because it's enable break it enables some breakpoints for if for example if you have low gear you might only uh, produce 13 rage on uh, one swing with your with your weapon on one auto attack you might only produce uh, 13 rage and if you spec one point here this enables you to cast execute on after every swing and not every other swing if you can cast execute on every other swing it would mean that you need to wait around about six seconds to cast execute on the boss fight and this would enable you to cast execute every three seconds so this can enable some breakpoints on lower level on lower gear levels and is worth considering then we have this one in rage this one gives you 25% more damage for 12 seconds and 12 attacks or 12 attacks for 12 seconds and this only occurs when you get critical hit so when a mob or a player is critting you so I, yeah this is kind of funny how much you can improve your dps as a warrior if you pull aggro so let's summarize everything we know so we know if you take damage you get rage so obviously if you're pulling aggro you get damage so you get a lot of rage then if you are specced into parry or you have parry by by nature as a warrior you are into a lot of mobs attacking you you're parrying a lot so you get a lot of parry haste so you can deal out dish out even more damage you can dish out more cleaves you will have the rage for that as well because they are all attacking you and while all this is happening, if they crit you, you deal with 25% additional damage. If you count all that together, you can increase your DPS by between 100 and 150% in a normal dungeon on a pool. So pulling aggro is actually not a bad idea if your healer can manage that and your tank is not getting annoyed by it. It can uh, improve your clear times by a lot. So what next sweeping strikes i will touch uh, i will touch this ability when we <laughs> touch this ability i will talk about this ability when we go to the rotation part for the in the iori rotation part because there's a lot to say about this uh, right now i can only say it uh, already it's cost 30 rage which which is a lot and you want to bank up rage before you use it so you can um use the 10 charges that this gives you because it's hold only 10 seconds and it gives you 10 charges so every time you hit something you will hit something around you as well and yeah it only has 10 charges 10 seconds so you want to bank up rage before you use it because otherwise you cannot really profit from this so next one we have slam so let's talk about slam first slam is an castable ability that will do one auto attack plus x amount of damage like most of your abilities do however if you cast something see here it cancels like it cancels your swing if i cast here i lose half a swing this is really bad so reducing the cast time of slam will dramatically increase the value of the of the ability and the ability if you improve it with this talent is extremely good it's uh, high on the priority list most of the time it's uh, it's rather behind whirlwind or even at the at the very top so improving this talent is always a good idea um, improving this ability with this talent is always a good idea all right now we have expertise 
like uh, improving expertise this will um, decrease the chances of your enemy dodging or parrying by two percent so i will use this uh, opportunity to talk about expertise versus versus hit rating because there is a lot of misconceptions about this topic so what happens when you when uh, when a mob parries your deck your auto attack is that your auto attack will still generate rage but not as much at as it would if it's not have been parried so we still get a little bit of rage obviously it will not deal damage but if the enemy dodge you might have the uh, you may have the uh, opportunity to use overpower which would be an dps increase in the lower levels or in the right situation so same goes for yeah if you are using like mortal strike and it gets and it gets parried you get refounded some of the rage that the ability uh, had cost you so getting parried or dodged is not that bad i mean it's not good but it's not that bad than missing something because if you're missing a white hit you will deal zero damage you will not get the opportunity to use overpower and you will get um, zero rage so zero damage zero rage no overpower from a dodge if your style of you so like a yellow gets um, missed or is misses the target you also get no rage refund so this is why hit is way more important than expertise i spec this anyways because yeah i have the option here to spec piercing howl or improved execute i don't need either of them because i'm raiding at the moment and my other attacks produce enough rage to cast or execute every string or even other stuff in between so i don't need this um <coughs> yeah this we already talked about every time you crit you get an attack speed debuff for three swings so that's why you want a certain breakpoint of crit so you can have an 100 percent uptime on this um yeah it takes speed more rage on, and so on i talked about this um then we have the improved berserker rage i use this uh, to talk about berserker rage this opportunity berserker rage will increase the rage that you gain when you are uh, when you take damage it will make you immune to to uh, zap and stuff and fear but uh, that's not the main purpose for pve the main purpose is it increased damage uh, the rage you get from damage taken so you should always use this on every pull on cd so for example let's say you charge in the back and some mob is casting like uh, fire nova or something like this you get 25 rage from the damage you get you you take if you would have used berserker rage before you get like 15 uh, 50 rage from it so that's a 25 rage you're missing out because you were to uh, dump to press the button if you pull aggro of course this ability <laughs> really comes in uh, and uh, feeds you a shit ton of rage this one yeah will give you 10 rage if you press the button it's uh, kind of interesting to consider i never tested it out but if you want you can go ahead maybe it suits your playstyle so then we have blood first blood first is an ability that deals damage um, depending on your attack power but uh, with a two-hander equipped especially with a slow one your uh, other styles your other yellows will always deal more damage than blood first so this will be very low on your priority list if you're running a two-hander this one will reduce the cooldown of your wheel wind wheel wind is a very good ability because it hits four targets and it's uh, doing a lot of damage and you can proc uh, win uh, you can get your crit buff via real win because it's four hits so you have a higher chance you can proc your sword spec on every hit of real wind and shit like that so this talent is extremely good for dungeon uh, slice so this one increases your hit chance by one to three percent depending on the points you put in you always want to be hit capped for mark for max level that means nine percent so this one helps you with getting it capped if you're playing to end it fury and this one increases your attack power by ten percent 
and decreases the threat you generate by another 10 percent so <coughs> what's unique about the deck power it scales better on slower weapons so the slower your weapon you more the more <coughs> bonus damage you get on your character sheet which means that your um, yellows will deal a lot more damage or your yellows that are hitting with your weapon so the 10% uh, less threat can also be a 10% damage increase if you think about it let's say for example you are threat capped which would mean that you need to dps stop to not uh, overcome your tank and threat then this talent is a 10% extra dps that you can drive so this one is not really interesting for us um, and here we have tactical mastery which would increase the rage you, uh, you keep when swapping stands for the rate spec this is certainly not an option but if you are leveling or if you're doing dungeons this one becomes very very good because you can use whirlwind swap to uh, battle stance, use thunderclap, swap immediately back to berserker stance, you can swap uh, stance to use disarm immediately because it costs 20 rage and of course you might want to spec improve charge so what you do is you charge in and then you swap stance to berserker because you want to use whirlwind and this talent enables you to keep all that rage so this is really good, feels really good to play and yeah that's it for the talent part this was a long video and a lot of information i hope you could uh, you can follow could follow and um, yeah then we see us in the rotation part bye bye